So hello again, everyone. My name is Ignacio Castillo. I'm a doctorate student in the field of software process and product quality at Mexico National Autonomous University. Speaking on behalf of my peers, Livia Slava and Gustavo de la Cruz, we are very pleased to be with you all today to talk about our results so far on applying user experience, user-centered in design and software engineering into mobile application development teaching. In recent years, the group Spaces and Interactive System for Education, SCA by its acronym in Spanish, from the Institute of Applied Sciences and Technology, ICAT, to which my peers belong to, has worked on improving the software development process by including in them user experience design practices. The group SCA process is an agile software development program, mainly based on both Scrum and stream programming frameworks. Let's set the stage by answering the question, why user experience and user-centered design practices in software development teaching? For starters, current educational models share the primacy of people and interpersonal relationship with agile methodologies. So in combination, they should allow to development of autonomy, capabilities, and abilities. On the other hand, agile methodologies are user-centered by nature since the inclusion of clients, users, and other stakeholders into the development deal is essential. Three of the four Agile Manifesto postulates emphasizes, and the first Agile principle establishes that our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Clients usually cannot be satisfied if users don't find value in the product, rejecting it. Moreover, on most accepted taxonomies on user experience, like Marvel Honeycomb here, uh, value is a key component of other components of user. Uh, value is a key component of user experience, and other components of it can be found in agile postulates and principles. Finally, one goal of higher education is the formation of highly trained professionals, but a gap has been observed between college alumni and industry needs. This is a complex issue of which, in our context, two important factors are different interpretations of non-functional requirements between professionals. User experience and user-centered design have shown in many other areas effective strategies to develop human factors. The motives to include user-centered design in software development process are related to software quality attributes which have been identified as primary factors on user retention and success of a software project. The group SEA process incorporates user design and user experience practices into its framework with the goal of disposing adequate tools for interactive learning product design. The group SEA process is divided in six phases that occur iteratively according to agile strategies and principles. Its application in projects can be distributed through three stages. In the following slides, the process will be briefly described. Here we present an overview of the stage and their phases. We start with the pre-production stage, which includes the definition and the same phases. Next, we have the production stage, which contains the phases realization and shares the testing and validation phase with the next stage, which is the post-production. In this stage, we encompass the phases closing, feedback, and maintenance. To present the group SEA process, we'll be using the business model model annotation. Here is a quick guide for anyone who wishes to revisit our presentation. These are the symbols we use in our diagrams. I'll describe each stage of the process as we go. In the first stage, the project is prepared. Its objectives, scope, and requirements are established. Starting with a client who approaches the group and through a solution, its proposal is created. Through iterations, requirements are studied and a low fidelity prototype is presented to the client. The iterations continue until a well enough proposal is achieved. The proposal is further refined through a medium fidelity prototype, which is used as a basis to define the end goals and a field's product build. A high fidelity prototype, which is a bare minimum product built for the desired production environment, uh, production environment. In the next stage, the last prototype is completed into the final product. 
Our design phase is very important. We go through at least three prototypes. The last one should be able to scale into the final product. So to accurately portray stakeholder needs and expectations, the design phase requires a group of designs. Some design roles can be performed by the same person if it's proficient enough. Graphic design, software, content, interface, and user experience design serve different aspects of the requirements inclusively. All design proposals are reviewed and can provide input for other design aspects. In the end, all design is compilated and integrated homogeneously. After we produce a high fidelity prototype, the production stage focuses on iteratively grow to this minimal product into its final version. From the last design review, tasks are prioritized for a week of development. Test and or acceptance conditions are redefined for each development task as necessary. The development process considers four types of, of exceptional tasks. The first are limits on expertise from developers, who often are undergraduate students. Assistance and training is provided if such an exception occurs. The second is limitation on tools. For example, a feature is limited by a selected library or runtime environment. Three are limitations in the design. When a tool presents limitations, the design is revisited. In case uh, an alternative it requires a change into the design, this also happens when the design has a limitation in, in itself. The last exceptional task considers integrations, uh, where integration conflicts can happen if a task requires uh, the same artifact to be modified. So changes must be must be integrated uh, uh, properly integrated. All changes are reported. Oops. All changes are reported and taken into consideration for the next iteration. Were there any exceptions to or not, the product design is revised, is revised to check if the current build complies with stakeholder needs and expectations so far. All these tasks occur iteratively until the final product is, is built. At the end of each iteration, Depending on agreements, stakeholders or their representatives can validate the build edge iteration produces. On the final iteration, this validation task extends itself into the final process stage. As stated before, the testing and validation phase is shared between the production and post-production stages. We begin the post-production by preparing the evaluation for the last iteration build. Depending on the iteration goals, this can be limited to automatic testing and code inspection, or comprehend a usability test which require questionnaires and protocols for users to perform a specific task with the product and assess the performance. When the iteration includes a version of the final release, the closing phase begins and a presentation for the client is prepared. Depending on agreements, delivery can also happen or the product can be installed into its uh, production environment. In the end, new agreements can be reached to start a new productive stage so we can uh, produce a new version of the product. The group CA process has been repeatedly applied in the course Mobile Devices Programming or BDM by its acronym in Spanish, which is an elective subject in the bachelor degree program on computer science at UNAM's science faculty. The application of the group SEA process introduces students to user centering design and user experience practices, while group SEA members observe the effect of the process in student projects activities. The mobile devices programming course is both practical and theoretical. Similar to related work, the course hours are divided between the professor who teaches human factors in application development and a professor assistant who teaches the Android framework. Between three and four example projects are given by the professional assistant. The development environment is presented, so students have a chance to learn applications lifecycle, API, best practices, and other development considerations. The course is divided into halves. In the first half, the example projects and the general human factors for mobile development are presented. The latter half is dedicated for the course final project. 
an application development, uh, sorry, the latter half is dedicated for the course final project, an application development with an actual external client. Such clients are usually academics and their needs align with group SEA goals, the development of computerized aid for didactic purposes. This allows the professor to manage the course project under a familiar framework and objectives. In order to assess the final build, a usability test is performed with users who comply with the user's objective public. Using the system usability scale or SOS, students estimate the degree in which the product allows users to reach their goals under the expected use context. Of the 16 weeks of the course, about eight are dedicated to the project development. Four of these eight weeks are devoted to productive activities such as coding. For this strict time frame, the agreements established with the client scope the project for a proof of concept high fidelity prototype. This allows the client to realize if the producer application really allows to achieve its goals where changes are necessary, if different requirements should be addressed. Yeah. When the final product is delivered, they can choose to establish new agreements to develop a more complete and improved version of the application. For product testing, students develop a series of assessment instruments and test session scripts which describe the activities to be performed. These activities should be around the most relevant requirements. An exit questionnaire is also developed to collect users' view on the effectiveness of the product to allow to sorry, an exit questionnaire is also developed to collect the user's view on the effectiveness of the product to allow them to perform the request tasks. In the closing phase, test results are presented to the client along with the tested product. It has been repeatedly observed that user-centered in design and user experience activities are foreign to the students at the beginning of the course. When the first tasks at the design phase occur, it's likely for students to focus on functional requirements, while user and client expectations are initially dismissed. As tasks develop and the identification of usability traits become more apparent to students, they show a change of attitude towards user-centered design. The value of usability testing as a mean for user quality assessment is usually highly regarded by the students who finish the course. In the rest of this talk, we present a reflection of the result of planning so far by applying the group SEA process in the mobile devices programming course. It has been frequently observed that task management, task distribution, and repository management activities, such as versioning, become clearer by the end of the semester even when the students have had previous software development experiences. This might be the effect of the grading scheme, which includes the product, its documentation, development history in the project repository, task distribution, and timeliness. Task management is graded through a history of a Kanban board at the end of each sprint. The mobile devices programming course has been taught yearly using the group SCI process since 2019, so far, two final projects have been continued after the semester ended. Students are invited to participate in the next version development as part of the graduation process. The first project which had continuity is Hocus Focus, which is an application designed for people with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. The other continuated project is Polix, a polymer teaching tool for a course at UNAM chemistry faculty. The university library services like a Polix content and cell review structure and reaching an agreement to develop a spin-off which aims for students to develop research competencies. As previously stated, Hocus Focus is an application designed as a tool for people with ADHD. It offers note-taking where records, the users can keep ideas and other volatile records which might be easily forgotten and mainly a habit agenda that uses the Android system notifications to alert users that it is time to start or finish a specific task, aiding the user in creating and keeping habits. Habits are associated with a data which can be scheduled for multiple occurrences along the week. Hocus Focus was awarded the Premio a la Innovación UNAM or UNAM Innovation Award 2019 
which is an annual prize that recognizes innovative research, entrepreneurial projects, and ideas. Focus Focus was awarded the second place in the social innovation category. On the other hand, Polyx is a polymer teaching tool that contains theoretical concepts and gamified set reviews. Users can study the theoretical content by browsing topics similar to chapters and subchapters in books. Content is multimedia. While text is primarily used to present the theory, images, audio, and video can further enrich it. The gamified set reviews offers quizzes, which questions must be answered in a limited amount of time. Users have the option to rethink their choice as long as they might have the time. When an answer is submitted, the next question is shown. In the end, the self review results are shown to the user, using color hints to display which answers were right and which were not. Incorrect submissions also show the correct answer and a link which directs the users to the screen which contains a theory about the question. When we were ordering a greeting of paper, this project was still on very early stages, so it was only briefly mentioned as an ongoing Polyx spin-off project. Now that the project is more mature, we have included it to this presentation. The CIDE, which means to choose, is a mobile application that aims students to develop research competences. The University Library Services wants to promote good research practices and ethics between the students from different levels, from high school to postgraduate. Students face a challenge where there are enormous quantities of information sources online, but not all of them are trustworthy or reliable. This application should help students to apply three critical thinking on sources selection and disinformation identification. The CD is being developed by mobile devices programming course Alumni, who use Polyx as a medium fidelity reference prototype. As we can see, the interface is very similar to that of Polyx. From the landing screen, users can cho choose between one or five thematic axes. Or the self-review uh, self gamified reviews. When a user chooses an axis, its content is presented by groups of sections of subsections. Currently, we only have one, uh, one type of self-review test, which is very similar to the one in Polyx. But in this case, run answers are fully explained while correct answers are only counted in the score. We are currently exploring the addition of an embedded web platform so our client can reuse gamified activities they already have for JavaScript enabled browsers. Students who have taken the mobile devices programming course and later incorporated into the group SEO projects have shown a need to structure and manage their activities and a reflected attitude towards the project goals. They also grasp a clearer vision of the activities they perform within the project. They not only know what they have to do, but they know why they have to do it, allowing them to provide feedback on iteration plans and software integration goals. On the other hand, the application of the process has helped help students to practice user-centered design to build applications which satisfy the stakeholder needs, the stakeholders' most relevant needs collecting feedback to identify risks to manage and opportunities to leverage. This also has provided feedback to further refine the process, identifying ambiguous activities in it. Finally, I would like to remark the contrast between our strategy, related work, and common findings in empirical research on software engineering. A group SCR process is an agile one with an emphasis on design tasks, which are exhaustive and consider several roles to produce different design aspects, which are integrated before any production activity takes place. At first glance, this appears to contradict some agile postulates and principles, since they state that working software, individuals, response to change, and unwritten decisions are key dimensions of agile frameworks. In fact, many surveys suggest that software developers have a literal interpretation of the agile postulates and principles, which in turn results in documentation and non-functional requirements mismanagement. In turn, agile proponents have presented many strategies for documentation and non-functional requirements development in agile projects, stating that they are not to be deprioritized, but they must be developed at a piece which both produce value for stakeholders 
and is manageable for developers, as in contrast to performing exhaustive activities for once. The group SEO process is actually a meta process. While its tasks have required inputs and expected outputs, many of its deliverables, number of iterations, and priority for each task are defined for each project and each of their iterations. Actual tasks are basically instantiated on the fly. This is how we achieve self-organization, simplicity, while striving to deliver valuable products encompassing the agile principles and postulates. Other high-level descriptions, should, such as a Scrum Guide, also should be used to instantiate the actual process once a project goals and expectations become clear, and it should evolve as iterations refine the project. Actual tasks, results, and goals must be defined according to stakeholder needs, and stakeholders will require documentation for operation, maintenance, withdrawal, or related future projects. Human factor, usability, interface, and quality requirements will also have to be prioritized according to each project needs. Otherwise, functional, valuable software is very hard to deliver. Here we use a reference, but for now, uh, we have reached there on the end of our presentation. Uh, and now we have a couple of minutes for any question or comments any of you might have.